Hey, Rick Usbell again from Cabaret Design Group, answering the question, how do you redesign a commercial bar? How do you design a bar? Discover the tips for systematically measuring existing bars and developing ideas for redesigning a commercial bar and back bar. Here again is the Asbelt plan that I created in preparation of the bar redesign, which depicts the shape of the existing bar, which we reviewed in part one of this series. I always recommend developing a record of existing conditions for every bar design and this one had particular significance. During my initial site visit, I immediately noticed that the existing bar appeared to have a matchbook appearance. The lobes were nearly identical in size and appeared to be symmetrical about the bar's vertical center line. This suggested that a simple redesign solution might be attainable. However, I also realized early on that the existing plumbing drains and electrical wiring could present complications in achieving that. As shown in these photos, the sheer quantity of utilities pose a challenge. The construction of this particular building was slab on grade, so utility relocation would have been very costly. Therefore, the new bar design would also be required to encapsulate the existing utilities. Most importantly, however, I needed to verify the exact location of all utilities before proceeding to the design process. And this particular bar posed a formidable hurdle. How does one locate utilities in a circular bar? Unless you own a total station GPS system, you have to get creative. After measuring countless commercial buildings over the years, what I've developed is the next best thing. Create your own two axis measuring system. Nearly every commercial building has ceramic tile floors and this becomes built-in graph paper. In other words, because we know the distance from a known point to this floor drain, we can then set up our grid so that we can get the horizontal and vertical distance to each other point from this point. So this is how the two axis system is set up. You either do it through flooring grid or snapping chalk lines. A word of caution, always measure twice. As I mentioned earlier, my goal was to use the symmetry of the existing bar to develop a symmetrical multi-sided bar. Realizing that I had constraints at both ends of the bar, my first step was to develop a rough draft, which you see here. Realizing that the center connecting section would likely be retained, I focused my effort on drawing a concept on the left end and then copied, flipped, and pasted the bar to the other to test my hypothesis. After several iterations, you'll notice that the right end of the bar is very similar to the left, and both are reasonably within the envelope of the existing bar tops as shown here, which I'll now unmask. The objects shown in green here and here are expendable, so these won't necessarily be part of the final design. Next, I created a first draft of the new bar by drawing the new countertops and overlaying them over the existing, which you'll see here. Although the bottom legs of the bar on each side aren't exact here and here, this is entirely acceptable to me. The bar is indeed symmetrical about its vertical axis shown here. A quick equipment layout of each side confirms that we're on the right track. A gate was drawn on each side of the bar for convenient personnel access. The aisle clearance of 52 and an eighth inches at the right end, as shown here, is well within the accepted range of 48 to 60 inches. The bartender aisle clearances of 78 inches within each station here and here are a bit excessive but the majority of the bartender's movements have been designed to be primarily side to side. So they'll be 
stationed on one side of the bar anyway. Besides, if I had chosen to minimize these aisles, we wouldn't have adequate aisles around the island back bar. Lastly, I designed each station to have about eight foot of speed rails, which is an ideal quantity. Also included is a preliminary concept for the center back bar that will house the draft beer towers. Although this will likely require more space given the flexibility to maneuver the center connecting section of the bar leads me to believe that this portion of the bar design should flow uneventfully. We'll address this issue in part three of this series.